Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. First of all, I would like to thanks those who subscribe my channel and supported me. Thank you guys. Okay, let's move to today's project. If you remember, I created a web browser in my one of the previous video. Today I'm going to further develop it. In my previous three videos, I created three components required for the web browser that I'm going to create now. If you haven't watched those videos, be sure to check them out. So after this video, you will be able to make a web browser with tabs. Remember, in this video, I will use a method that came to my mind. I'm sure there are many ways. So let's see how to do this. This is my previous web browser. It is functional, but today I'm going to change this UI completely. First, I will copy this main.py file into my project folder. I'm not going to use the old UI, so these files are not necessary. So you can see this component folder. It has some custom widgets. If you want to know how to create those custom widgets, there are some link in the description below. Watch those video too. Okay, now I am going to create the main UI. It is still empty but in a few moments custom widget will be added here. We don't need these things anymore. Also, we have to import these pre created components. Then I will add these three custom widgets to the main window. So this is our main widget. Using it, we can initialize this main window class variable. I told you about this in my title bar making video.
okay now you can see the complete browser also now we can move the window using this title bar but still this tab button button doesn't work so in this case we have to set up a basic tab control system so i like to add three function and four variables to do that Add tab, select tab, and delete tab. This dictionary is for whole tabs and pages. Tab ID, currently active tab, and finally tab counter. First, I will write the add tab function. If you watch my previous component making videos, I think you can recognize these functions. This is a slot connection. I told you about this in my tab button making video. And this is our signal. Okay. Okay, now we don't need these lines because we have the add tab function, but to create the first tab, we need to call the add tab function here. Also, now we can connect this function to our tab bedding button. Now you can see it's working but we have a situation here so in this case the newly added tab should be active and the old tab should be inactive so how to do that we already have the currently active tab so using that id we can set the active status of the tab button you know we already have the function to do that also we can hide the relevant web page easy
Okay, now it's working perfectly. Let's move to the select tab function. It is a bit similar to the add tab function, but what is the TID? You can see here I connected our select tab function to this click signal. So this is that signal and it emits the relevant tab ID. That's how we get value for TID. Ok, it's working. Let's move to the delete tab function. I think this function confusing you so let me give you an explanation. By using this line we can get the id of the tab we want to remove. With these lines we can delete the tab button and the relevant web page. After deleting those objects we can remove them from the dictionary. Easy. But what happens after we delete the currently active tab? Then there is no active tab. It is not possible because the browser must have an active tab so we have to avoid this problem. So this temporary list contains our tab dictionary keys. Temp id is the index of the tab we want to remove and last id is the index of the last tab. So to delete the tab there should be more than one tab. If there is only one tab that means we need to close the browser. like this ok if the tab we want to delete is the same as the one currently active we need to check this condition I will show it with the browser ok
suppose we want to delete this tab then it is this kind of situation 0 1 2 3 temp id last id so after deleting this tab this should be the next active tab else it is this kind of situation this should be the next active tab after deleting this tab i think you got some idea about this mechanism So guys you can see it's working perfectly I hope this video will be useful to you and I will further develop this browse in the future so don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you for watching my videos see you in the next video goodbye